everybody, it's Pastor Tavner. I just want to take a second and say thank you so much for tuning in to Venue Church right here online. Welcome. You are part of the family. And I'm so excited that we're literally getting to build God's kingdom and change the world together. Hey, if you tuned in, just take a second before you move forward with the video and like it, comment, subscribe to our YouTube page, and turn on all your alerts because you don't want to miss everything that God's doing through us, me and you together at Venue Church. A couple more things. I just wanted to remind you that something as easy as sharing this link can really help someone. So if you know somebody going through some things, they need a little bit of God in their life, we say it like this around Venue. Just share the link, and when you do, you share the love. I'm telling you, it can change somebody with one simple click on your phone. And if you'd love to give to the ministry, there's some easy ways that we're going to put on the screen because your finances are helping us make a difference, not just here in Chattanooga, but all over the world. Hey, God's doing something special through this house, and I'm excited for you to hear the word that he's got today. So listen, sit up straight, lean in, get your notepad ready, enjoy the word. I'll see you soon. I love you. We thank you that our life is built on a firm foundation, a faithful father, a friend that, stick is close, that sticks closer than a brother, someone who said they would never leave us and never forsake us. We love you so much. We're excited to see everything you're going to do in us today. God, we just ask you in this moment right now, as our hearts are prepared, we just want to tell you you're welcome here. You're welcome in our heart. You're welcome in our life. You're welcome in the deepest parts of our soul. Do in us everything you want to do today. May we leave different. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, everybody said amen. Amen. Acts chapter 2, I just want to begin reading in the scripture. You can be seated, Acts chapter 2 says this, says, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. And at that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. And they heard the loud noise. Everyone came running. And they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. I love that. I love when the Holy Ghost gets involved. Something happens that makes people come running to see what's going on. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judah, Capodicea, Pontus, and the province of Asia. Egypt and the areas around Libya and Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts in Judaism, Christians and Arabs, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other, but others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles, and he shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And in those days I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and clouds of smoke. 
The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. People of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders and signs through him as you all know. But God knew what would happen. And his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and you killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life. Listen to this. For death could not keep him in his grip. King David said this about him. I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he's right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself for he died and he was buried and his tomb is still among us. But he was a prophet and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead. And we are all witnesses for this. Now he's exalted to the place of highest honor at God's right hand. And the Father, as he has promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us just as you see in here today. David himself never ascended into the heavens. Yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made Jesus whom you crucified to be both Lord and Messiah. And Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, brother, What should we do? Peter replied, Each one of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and your children and even to the Gentiles, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners Save yourselves from this crooked generation. Listen to this. And those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to that church that day about 3,000 in all. God, we love your word. And we thank you that the power of your presence is going to move us forward today. Do something in us. We're yours. In Jesus' name. Come on, everybody said amen. Amen. I want to jump in week number four of the season that we're in called Jars. And I want to talk to you on this subject today. I want to talk to you on this subject today. The key to your best life. The key to your best life. I'm so excited about what God is doing in this season with us. Uh, I'm really thankful that he's given us the opportunity to dive deeper in his word, to learn some of the principles and some of the things that he would have us put in place in our life so we can become everything he created us to become. I've been saying this for quite some time now, but the greatest tragedy that we could have is at the end of our life find out that we were successful at the thing we weren't called to do. And how sad it would be if we spent our life learning and pushing and working and striving to become something less than what God actually intended us to become. 
And we dove into the story at the beginning of this season. It's kind of our key scripture that we come out of in 2 Kings where Elisha visited the lady who her husband had died. And they're about to haul her kids off to, to do labor, to pay off all of her debts. And she's like, I just need help. And he says, what do you have? She says, I just have a little oil. He said, well, go borrow some jars from your neighbors and put them on the table. And what the Lord has been showing us is this, is that the harvest, what we receive What God does is not about his ability to provide. Do you know what it's about? It's about our ability to contain. It's not about does God have the oil to pour in our life. It's do we have the jars on the table to receive it. Remember in the story, as long as there was a jar, the oil would pour. The Bible didn't say the oil ran out. It just said it stopped flowing. And as long as we keep putting these jars on the table, as long as we start opening these doors in our life, For God to do something in us, I'm telling you something, hear me. He'll continue to pour out into you in such ways that it'll literally blow your mind. And you'll look back at your life a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, and you won't even recognize the person you needed to be, uh, that you used to be. Because you've put so many jars on the table and God's done so much in you that you will have almost like gotten on a rocket ship. And been blasted into your destiny. We've talked about so far one of the jars being how our words work and the power of our words. We've talked about how our mind changed the way you think, changed your life. We've talked about so many things. And today, I wanted to take it up a level. I wanted to take it up a level and talk to you about how to live your best life. I just read you out of Acts chapter 2. I don't know if you're familiar with the story. I don't ever take for granted who's in the audience or who's watching all over the world. I don't know if you've ever read your Bible, been in church before. Maybe this is your first time in the church world. We call this the day of Pentecost. Uh, we, we, we call this the time where, where Jesus has, has resurrected from the dead. He's, he's come and he's given his disciples a commission. You're going to go preach the word all over the world. You're going to win people to Jesus. It's still happening today, thousands of years later. But it, before he said that, he said, but before you go, you've got to wait for a second. Because after I go, I'm going to send someone special into your life. The the reason I have been able to do the miracles I've done, the reason you've seen what you've seen is because I have been filled with the power and the presence of another part of who I am called the Holy Spirit. And if you will wait, and if you'll receive this Holy Spirit, and if you'll welcome this Holy Spirit, and if you'll give this Holy Spirit permission to live out in fullness in your life, you will be able to do everything I've commissioned you to go do. And Peter is here that day. And he he gets bold and he begins to preach. And you see the Holy Spirit coming on everybody. And 3,000 people in one day gave their life to Jesus and got baptized. It's a powerful story. Listen, it's a story that the Lord keeps reminding me He wants to see continuously happen in the church even today. Come on, is somebody with me in this place? I don't know if you caught my stories on Instagram yesterday, but I had to post the verse in Acts that says that God's desire is to see his churches grow. And I was was thinking about all of this and really where I wanted, where the Lord wanted to take us. And I, I don't know about you, but can I just ask you a question? How many people in here, the majority of you eat out most of the time? Come on, let me see your hand. That's most of the people in the room. I'm sure most of the people out there. A lot, it's for different reasons. Some people have busy schedules. Some people just don't know how to cook. Some people, the, I don't, I, there's a million reasons. But do you know what I know about cooking? Because I'm just going to tell you, getting some good home cooking It's some of the best thing you can ever have if it's some good food. It's way better than even some Christian chicken at Chick-fil-A. You know what I'm talking about? But do you know why I think a lot of people avoid the kitchen? Because they don't want to deal with the mess. I've heard this so many times. I've heard it over and over. I don't mind the cooking. I just don't like the cleaning. I don't mind the cooking, and I love the eating. But after that's all over, I don't want to deal with everything else that's going on all over the kitchen. 
and I, I had that picture in my mind because it's kind of what the church has done when it comes to allowing freedom of a person of God called the Holy Spirit to work. I don't know if you realize this, but so many churches, a lot of churches have, have blocked out the work and the person of the Holy Spirit to be allowed where they're at. Can I just be real and vulnerable with you? In the first few years of this church, I did it too. Because I didn't want to be weird and I didn't want to be crazy and I didn't want all the mess because can I tell you something? When you just let God do what he wants to do, sometimes it can seem a little messy. People don't know how to deal with it when somebody's getting delivered from something in the back and it's something that's had a stronghold on them their whole life and they finally feel a freedom they've never felt. So they may scream or they may yell or they may run a lap or they may come up and they may fall down under the presence of the Holy Spirit or they may cry at the altar or they may get hyped up and run laps around. They may high five. They may pray in their prayer lane. We get freaked out. We want the power of God, but we're afraid of what we call the mess of God. We're afraid of the weird, and what I've told you before and what I've noticed is that the Holy Ghost isn't weird. People are weird. Usually the expression of God is not God himself. It comes through the personality of that person. You may have somebody running a lap. You may have somebody standing like this, and they both got, the, got God and the Holy Spirit working, but their personality expresses it different. But because we've seen or heard or 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 or, or, or been ex uh, in an experience of something that we didn't understand sometimes, listen to this, are you ready for this? We have squashed the invitation to the Holy Spirit to work in our life. And I'm just going to say something really bold today. I'm going to say something really bold. Can I be your pastor today? Can I push you over the edge today? Can I get you like to the nest like a mama bird and then just kick you out because I know you can fly? Come on, is anybody in here? I'm going to be bold. Can I say this? I'm going to speak to you online because if you're watching, that means you considered me your pastor, even if you're sitting in your living room or laying in your bed right now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you right now. Ready for this? Listen to me. I do not think that you can live your best life, your fullest life, and do everything God called you to do without inviting and releasing the power of the Holy Spirit fully in your life. You'll strive. You'll be frustrated. You'll feel stuck. You'll know there's more, but you'll never be able to reach it until you release the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. That's why I titled the message today, It's the Key to Your Best Life. John chapter 10, verse 10, it says it this way. It says the enemy's coming, and you know what he wants to do? He wants to steal, he wants to kill, he wants to destroy. But here's why Christ came, so that you could have life to the full. Can I say that in a different way? So you can live your best life. Jesus Christ did not leave heaven for 33 years, allow himself to be nailed to a cross and humiliated, beaten, bleed for you, go down to the depths of hell and face your punishment for you and get back up on the third day so you could die with some of your potential still in you. He did it so you could be free, so that you could have the key, so that you could live your fullest life and do everything that you were called to do. Y'all know what I'm doing right now? I'm preaching way better than y'all are saying amen. God's got something really big in store for you. And I want to just help you open the door to the Holy Spirit today in your life. I want to give you some information and then give you an opportunity to allow the Holy Spirit to, to come alive in your life in a way you never thought was possible. Y'all want to talk about that with me today? A couple things that I, that I wanted to tell you as, as, I, as I wanted to talk about the key to your best life, just to let you get to know the Holy Spirit a little bit, to let you to let you know who he really is so you'll know what you really need. First thing I needed you to know, this is what I really felt like the Lord wanted me to open with, is this. Number one, you got to realize this. 
the key to your best life, the Holy Spirit, number one, he's your guide. He's your guide. I, uh, I, I went, I used to, uh, a long time ago, been a while, COVID shut things down, and then and I just, I, I, fe- I just fell in love with this. I've always been in love with this house, but I, I used to, I used to chase things. Can I just be vulnerable? Can I just be real? I had this need in me to fulfill, so I wanted to go preach all these big places and things because it made me feel like, oh, I must be doing something if I did that. So I used to travel all the time and preach and do, and that's not bad, and I hope I get the opportunity to do that even more for the right reasons. But I've, I really fell in love with just being here on this stage, building this house, because can I just, a little plug for you, I've never met a better group of people in my whole life, and I would never want to pastor anybody else. But the most amazing people in the world, but I remember this one time, because I, I, you, you show up places when you do that, and you've never really met people before, and you've never been to that church before, and sometimes you've never even been to that city before, and you get off the plane, and you don't really even know what to do, and so what they usually do is they have a host waiting for you, and that host will pick you up, and they drive you everywhere. I remember this place I went, and I landed. I'd never been there before, and I didn't really even know anybody, and I was alone. I didn't take anybody with me on this trip, and I, I, I stepped off the plane, and I, and I went, and they, the, the host met me. You ever seen that? Like, it's a real thing. Like, they stand at the thing, like, your name on the paper or whatever, and, like, they met me. And, and, and I'm like, hey, this, that's me. Good to meet you. And, and I always tried to talk to them. And this was like a, their host was, was a young guy. He was an intern at the church. He hadn't even been there very long. And I remember getting in the car with him and, and, and just talking. I wanted to make him feel comfortable. And I wanted to find out about him. I just wanted to talk about him. So I'm just talking and talking. I think I distracted him, honestly. I think there were two things going on. Number one, I distracted him because I was talking so much. Number two, he was new and he didn't even know where he was going. So almost an hour later, we got to the church. I mean, he would always, oh, I think I took a wrong turn. Oh, I got to turn around here. I'm kind of getting, he would always explain, I'm new here. I'm trying to figure this out. I, I don't know if he just didn't know his iPhone had a GPS on it or not. I don't know what was happening. But it took us an hour. We finally get there. I do the conference, I preach. This was like an, like an in and out thing. Like I came in, I, I preached, I got back on a plane, I left the same day. After I'm done preaching, another host takes me back to the airport. Can I tell you what happened? It took an hour to get from the airport to the church. When we were done, it took 10 minutes to get from the church to the airport. It's because the guy, the second person who took me, was a staff who grew up in that city, who lived there, who knew all the shortcuts, and he knew exactly how to get me where I needed to go in the quickest, easiest amount of time. He made a way better guide than the first person. Y'all know I'm preaching already. I I came to tell you, the Holy Spirit is our guide. Do you know what a guide actually is? You go hiking, you do something. A guide got hired because they've gone down every path you would choose to go down, and they know the best way, the safest way, the quickest way, the easiest way, the way if you want an adventure, they know how to take you that way. Whatever you want to do, they know because they've been to the end and back. The Bible says this. It says that the Lord knows our beginning from our end. He doesn't live inside of time. He's not going day by day along with us trying to figure this thing out. He saw our life as a whole before we were ever born. He knows the end from the beginning. And he is a guide to us to say, hey, if you'll listen to my word, I... There we go. He's our God. I I was thinking about this. Well, let me just read verse 14. I don't want to read the whole verse as I was was going back and praying and reading this. Verse 14, I I just wanted to read the first couple words of this. It says this. It says, then Peter stepped forward. Then Peter stepped forward. What I couldn't get out of my mind as I was thinking about this and reading about this is who was delivering the message. Right? I mean, Peter is the one standing boldly in front of the entire city preaching the power of Jesus Christ that he's the Messiah 
and that the Holy Spirit can change everything in your life. He's literally just coming off of a meeting with Jesus, forgiving him and restoring him for denying him three times in front of all the people he's preaching to now. Peter stepped up. Then Peter stepped forward. Peter, with that, oh, come on now, I'm about to preach. Peter, without the filling and power of the Holy Spirit, denied Jesus in the courtyard. Peter, post the filling in of the Holy Spirit, is standing in front of the entire city that he denied Jesus to, preaching what God can do through an experience that he just had. He understood who the guide was because you got to understand who Peter was. Peter was not just like the spiritual guy in the city. Peter was not like the big time, he's going to be the most successful. If it was in his high, high school and they had yearbooks, the most, the most like likely to succeed would not have been Peter. The most likely to be in jail would have been Peter. The most likely to cause trouble would have been Peter. A lot of things, but not the most likely to stand in front of an entire city and declare a brand new way of thinking that changed everything would not have been Peter. Peter's just out in a fishing boat. He's settled in a life. He's seen his dad fish. He's seen family fish. This is kind of what everybody does around here. We just fish. So I'm just like, I'm clocking in today. I'm settled for my norm. I'm settled for norm. I'm settled just to get on the boat, get a little sun, have enough fish to feed us and make a little money, stay in my little town of Capernaum, not experience the world, and just do what I do because it's what everybody's always done. And as long as I'm not causing too much trouble, I'll be good. That was Peter until the Holy Ghost in Jesus showed up. Until the guide showed up. Until the one who had already seen who Peter could become showed up. And the one who already saw who Peter could become came and spoke to Peter, not where he was, but to where he was going. And said to him, maybe you're out there. Maybe you're a cussing fisherman. Maybe you're a fighting fisherman. Maybe you've settled for the norm. But I see something in you that you don't even see in yourself. I've been to the end of your life, Peter, and I want you to follow me and start fishing for something different. I mean, you take Peter, take Peter. Think about Peter. What had Peter seen? I've been to Israel five different times. I've been on the Sea of Galilee. I've been in a boat at Capernaum where all of this would have happened. I've been on the shore where Jesus forgave Peter. I know the view. They call it the Sea of Galilee. That's what we read, but it's not an ocean. It's fresh water. It's a lake. And it's not even a big lake. It's a lake that standing on this side, you can see the other side. Like, it's, 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 it's not like Peter's world was huge. Peter was stuck in a small, he would have never seen anything different than his surrounding. Every single day would have been repeat. Wake up, get on this boat, come home, go home. Wake up, get on this boat, do that every single day. And Jesus said, follow me. And let me tell you what happened. Peter goes from, not, from, from being a guy who would have been stuck in the norm to taking a step and getting to travel the whole world that he would have ever been able to go to in that time around him. He got to see blind eyes open right in front of him. He got to go on the Mount of Transfiguration and see Jesus transfigured into his glorious body and talk to Moses standing there on the Mount of Transfiguration. He got to get out of the boat in the middle of the storm and walk on water. He got to see Jesus put his hand up and still the ocean. He got to see five loaves and two fishes feed 20,000 people. I'm telling you, he got to dive in and get forgiven by Jesus on the beach. He got to stand and preach to, 3, 000, or to the world, world and 3,000 people get saved saved in one day he became listen he went on a journey that blew his mind and exceeded anything he could ever imagine do you know why because he was bold enough to follow the God he was bold enough to follow the God I just I gotta prophesy to you can I prophesy to you I'm going to read it in a minute, but the Bible says this. We just read it. In the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit, and we're going to dream dreams and see visions, and we're going to prophesy. And I felt like the Lord told me to prophesy to you in this moment and to everybody watching in this moment. Can I tell you something? I'm prophesying that you are not going to settle for the norm, that you are not going to settle 
for what is less than what God has called you to. And that every single day, I'm believing from this day forward, you're going to get up and you're going to follow the guide who's got something bigger for your life. And you're not going to believe that who, what he said, the enemy's telling you who you are. You're going to answer every day to who God and the Holy Spirit is calling you to be and that he sees you as. I'm preaching in this place. He's our God. You've been there. He knows the way. He wants to take you on an adventure. Can, you, can, can I just tell you about the adventure that God wants to take, take you on? Can, can I just tell you what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to, you're gonna have to <laughs> I'm having a hard time saying it because I know it's going like, to upset you. You're going to have to decide that you don't care about comfort anymore. You're going to have to decide that you don't care about people's opinions anymore. You're going to have to decide that you don't mind being called crazy. You're going to have to decide that you don't mind taking risks. Because listen, don't miss this. You can have comfort or you can have calling, but you can't have both. Because when the guide shows up, the guide says, I know you feel good here. I know you feel comfortable here, but let me tell you where I really have your life. And in order to get here, you can't stay there. So come follow me. And we're going to do some crazy things. But if you'll trust me through the craziness, the craziness ain't going to kill you. The craziness is just going to mold you to be able to handle the weight of the level I'm taking you to. And if you'll trust me on the journey, I'll blow your mind. You read through the entire scripture, it's, it's how God worked. Hey, Noah, build an ark. Uh, okay. Build something I've never seen, never been a construction worker, to protect us from something that's never happened, that when you say the word, we don't even understand what it means because it's never taken place before, and to tell everybody to get on the boat with us and to convince everybody that every animal in the world is going to just wander on this boat on its own. Like, he, he was crazy. Hey, Abraham, leave your whole family. Okay. What did he tell his family? Hey, I'm leaving. Where are you going? I have no idea. Not like he had a cell phone. He couldn't call him when he got there. I mean, we can go down the line. Hey, David, fight Goliath. You're 14. Go fight the 10-foot-tall giant. Hey, Paul, go completely against what you were raised to believe and start preaching something brand new, even when they beat you and stone you and throw you out to die. Some things seem crazy. But the guide knows what he's doing. He's your guide. Here's the second thing you've got to realize. If you're going to live your best life, if we're going to do away with all this, like, I'm scared of the Holy Spirit, I'm scared of, all, we're just going to go for it. Because he's our God, but we've got to remember this, not only is he our God, listen, he's our power. Hmm. I was leaving a, was at a restaurant? I don't know. A few weeks ago, a couple months ago, I don't know when it was. So, you know, restaurant, we go out, it was late, not many people there, kind of shut the place down, going to go home, have my truck sitting there. My truck doesn't have a key, it's got the key fob. Do y'all have a car like that? It's got the key fob. I don't have like an, a key thing in it, it's just a button to push or whatever, so like, I go, I pull my key fob out to unlock the truck, and it won't do anything. 
somehow I, my truck's got those little buttons on the door where you can have like a code, but I've never set that code. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> I was thinking, why have I never set this code in that moment? But I don't know how it happened. I just started hitting buttons and it unlocked. I guess that was the Lord. So then I opened it up and I got in and it wouldn't start. And every time I tried to start it, it, was, it this little thing would pop up and just say, like, you're, it would say battery, like key file battery dead, something like that. Y'all know what I got to do that night? This was really fun. I got to walk home. At like midnight. Good thing I have a mohawk and tattoos because people thought I was the crazy one walking at midnight, so they're not going to bother me. But I got to thinking. I had this huge machine with all the power to get me anywhere I wanted to go. Like it has the, it has the engine, it has all of the stuff. But it just sat there, and I had to walk myself because the battery was dead in the key fob. Because I was lacking connection. Because there was no power to start it up to take me where I needed to go. And it reminded me, the Lord gave me a picture of my life before the Holy Spirit, the Lord gave me a picture of this church's life before the Holy Spirit. The Lord gave me a picture of your life without the Holy Spirit. Do you know what it's like? It's like having a car sitting there, but you're walking home because you won't put the battery in the key fob. Can I tell you the truth of the story? I know y'all are like, oh, poor guy, the, the battery, the key fob died. My truck had been telling me for two months, change the battery in your key fob. For two months. I've even complained on the phone to people like, this thing just keeps putting this thing up over and over and over. I'll never complain about that again. I ignored it for two and a half months. Now I'm walking home by myself at midnight because I ignored the call that I was lacking power. Can I tell you where some of the frustration lies in some of our life? It's because you feel the call, but you lack the power. And man, you could hop in the vehicle to your destiny and get there, but we're trudging and walking, striving, tired, because We've just missed this part. We've missed this part. We've been afraid to invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of our life. The Bible talks about, and you can go there and read it yourself, Hebrews chapter 6. It talks about how as we, it just says this, it says we're going to get past the elementary things of the doctrine in that it includes the doctrine of baptisms. Multiple with an S. There's three baptisms. There's, there's the baptism into the body of Christ. That's salvation. There's the baptism in water. That's when someone actually baptized you and it's a representation of what God does and breaks strongholds on your life. And then there's a third baptism. It's the baptism in the Holy Ghost. It's not that you don't get all of the Holy Ghost when you get saved. When you get saved, all of the Holy Spirit you're ever going to get comes and lives in you. It's not, do you get all of him? It's this, does he get all of you? Yeah. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, when, if you've heard that term before, the third baptism is not about, can you come into me more? It's all of you that is in me, I release to do anything it wants to do. Now, Because here's what we got to understand about the Holy Spirit. You heard me say this before, maybe you didn't know what it means. But the Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. We're not robots, and he's not going to force us to do anything. He is going to enter and become a part of your life at the level you invite him. So here's the thing. 
I had the key fob in my pocket, but the battery was dead. I had the, I had the ability to start the truck and drive home and get there quick and safe, but it was dead because I didn't change the battery. There are so many things that you have the ability to accomplish on the inside of you, but they are not happening because you won't put the battery in and release the Holy Spirit to do anything in all power in your life and say, I'm completely yours. Explode in me. Because we're afraid, right? Well, man, if I release the Holy Spirit in my life, am I going to come one of them weird people? Am I going to lay out and they're going to put a cloth on me? Am I going to start yelling around and, 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 and sound like a wild person? Am I going to, people going to think I'm weird? People gonna, nobody wants all that weird stuff. No, I don't believe all of that. Go look at what everybody searches for, man. People, what are the most, some of the most popular movies and shows that come out? Stuff with wild, crazy, sci-fi, unbelievable, supernatural things. So you're telling me the whole world is just hooked on Stranger Things that is about an alternative spiritual world that has powerful things happening in it that's trying to get into the normal world, but nobody's going to believe that the Holy Ghost exists and nobody's going to want the real power that is in another world that wants to come in our world and turn everything right side up so that it cannot torture us like the show, but bless us like God always wanted to happen. You're telling me people aren't searching for that? People are going to run from crazy. Oh, they, you get two Holy Ghosts over there. They'll be running from you. Nah, you get some Holy Ghost in this place, and we won't be able to seat the amount of people in any building that we get because they'll be coming from... I don't care. The devil ain't going to shut me up today. People are going to be coming from the north and the south and the east and the west just to taste and see that God is good. I'm telling you today is the day to release the guide and the power in your life. Today is the day to say, you know what? I don't want any more mediocre Christian living. I don't want to go through the motions anymore. I don't want to just show up to say I came. I don't want to just, just settle for success. I want to strive and pray for significance. I want to see more. I want to see everything God's got for me take place. I want to be able to lay on my deathbed, and I want all my children and grandchildren around me to say, look, they followed me. It seemed crazy. They got ridiculed. Nobody understood. But look at all the things that God did in their life. There's a city. It's a state. There's a nation. There's a world. You know what they're waiting on? They're waiting for some Holy Ghost people. They're waiting on then Peter step forward. Put your name right there. They're waiting on somebody to say, you know what? Don't matter if I denied him three times. I'm stepping forward. something else to say he's your guide he's your power he wants to take you on a life's adventure you could never imagine you're going to have to leave some old behind to get some new to fill you with power. He wants to release things in you that you can't do for yourself. Through the baptism of him. And then, you ready for this? He wants to arm you with the secret weapon. 
You know what he wants to do? He wants to introduce you to your prayer language. He wants to introduce you to a next level way to connect with him that'll bring heaven to earth in your life at such a rate it'll make your head spin. You know, I've told you what the enemy's afraid of the most, he fights the hardest. That's why there's such a big battle about the Holy Spirit in the church world and about what we would call, maybe you've heard it this way, speaking in tongues. Well, I don't know if I believe in that. Well, if you do that, you gotta have an interpreter. And I just, I, I wanted to clarify some things. I'm gonna read a scripture, but there's a difference between speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. I agree 100% that the, the chapter that you read about the order, it's a whole chapter about the order that a public, corporate gathering of his believers and how it should work. So I 100% agree that you shouldn't have people getting up here delivering words to the congregation in tongues and nobody understands. That's weird. And God knew that would be weird and he knew it would be confusing. And so he said, when that happens, what I'll do is I'll provide an interpreter to let you know what I'm trying to tell my people. Sometimes I've heard the person pray, speak in tongues and then interpret themselves. Sometimes I've heard them pray in tongues and then somebody will stand up and give the interpretation. That's for the corporate body of Christ when we get together. That's not the same as praying in tongues. You can have a gift of tongues which means that God's given you a gift that when His Spirit moves in a corporate setting, you will be the one He chooses to deliver that word from heaven to the people. That's the gift of tongues. That's not the same as a prayer language. Not everybody has that gift of tongues, but everybody has the invitation to have a prayer language to pray in tongues. Sometimes you'll hear me over the microphone say something. I'm not delivering a speech in tongues. I'm just praying, and you hear me praying over the mic in my prayer language. That's how I operate. Let, let, let me just read you a verse, and let me, let me just explain for a second, and then I'm going to invite you. I want you to prepare your heart, because I'm going to invite you, whether you're in the building or whether you're watching online, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit today and to receive your prayer language today. But I want, I, want to, I want to read this. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 and 2. They're going to put it on the screen. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 and 2. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However, don't miss this, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. This verse is so confusing unless you understand the context of this verse. Forever, I just thought that meant, hey, don't speak in tongues because nobody will be able to understand you because it's a mystery. But if you understand the culture in which this is written, Paul was Roman. He grew up in Rome. He understood how Rome operated. It's what I love about Jesus. Jesus is the, the I call him this, I coined this phrase. You ready for this? The pointing preacher. Whenever I went to Israel, I figured out he was the pointing preacher. Because if you go to where Jesus was, everywhere that he was, he was pointing to something as an example. He was super relevant. He was the best storyteller ever. He connected with his audience. Even when he's dying on the cross, he's aware of who's crucifying him. He's hanging on the cross, and he still wants to reach them, so he speaks in their language, and he says these words. I have it tattooed on my arm in the original language. He says this, tetelestai, or he says this, it is finished. He, he did this because he was surrounded by Roman officers and he knew he would understand his language. It was a term that they recognized very well because let me, let, me, let me just catch you up. See, when they would engage in a military campaign as a Roman army, they had a master plan. 
right? The generals, the leaders, the, the ones over every legion, they would get together and they would draw up this, this is how we're going to win the victory. The overall plan, only one or two people knew about and nobody else could know the whole plan, so they called the actual plan to win the battle, ready for this, the mystery. They called it the mystery. So then they would get the leaders of the legions and the leaders of, of the, 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 the ones who, who, who were the archers and the ones who were in the cavalry and rode the, the horses and the ones who were the infantry with the swords and were going before and the ones, who, all of that, they would get them together one by one and they would tell them their part of the plan. So here's your assignment. Then they would call somebody, here's your assignment. They, they would never tell anybody the whole plan. That way if they got captured, nobody could torture out of them the whole plan and come against it. It was called the mystery. So then they would put all of the different ones, parts of the army, in their plan working. And the leader who came up with the mystery would stand in an elevated place where he could see the whole battle happening. And as he watched each place make advancement and it got to a place where the enemy could not come back and attack or make any victory at all, he would get up and he would yell out loud, it is finished, or to tell us die. Because what he was telling him is, maybe this has been weeks, maybe it's been months, maybe it's been days, you're bloody, you're bruised, you've lost friends, but I wanted you to hear my voice say it's finished. Here's what that means. That means every part of the mystery has advanced to a place the enemy can't defeat you anymore. So just, you got one more push in you. Just keep going. Are you ready? Can I read that verse again? Throw that verse up. First Corinthians. Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, but especially may prophesy next. Listen to this. For he who speaks in their tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands it. However, in the spirit, what does he speak? He speaks the mystery. Ready? Do you get it? In a when you pray in tongues. When you pray in your natural language, when you pray just by what you know, all you can pray about is the one space you have eyes on. You, don't, you need 12 things to work together in order for your destiny to happen. But when you pray in your own understanding, you only can focus on one of those. So you may be winning in one area and getting beat in 11 other areas. But when you pray in your prayer language, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, do you know what happens? You pray the whole mystery. You may not understand even what you're saying, but what you are doing is you are giving permission to all the other areas in your life that need to be working that you don't even know about to move you forward. Permission to move you forward in such a way where the enemy has to say, I surrender, I can't come back. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, can I tell you what God's doing? He's up on the throne yelling, it is finish just keep pushing just keep praying just keep moving just keep believing just keep acting just keep doing just keep going you got this it's almost over don't give up now Listen, we make it so complicated. Maybe you've never been taught. Maybe you've never even heard this before. Or maybe it's just been made so confusing. I always thought, I was scared because I always thought you had to come up and then all of a sudden you're going to get there and somebody's going to pray over you and you're just going to feel something and then you're just going to start speaking in tongues. I was afraid. Because let me tell you who I was. I went to this Benny Hinn thing one time and he went like this. Just like that. And the whole crowd fell. Now you can believe Benny Hinn or not. I'm not here to promote him or unpromote him, none of that. But I'm just telling you, I was a part of the church he came to to do that. And he didn't choreograph with 5,000 people to fall all at once like that. It wasn't him. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. But just like that, whoom, in unison, everybody went down except for two people, me and the pastor's son. 
So here they go. Everybody goes down. I'm like this. Why did I say that? Because I was that guy that was afraid. I didn't want to go down because Benny Hinn can't put me down. Everybody goes down but me. What's going to happen? I'm afraid. I only want to give us. A... Here's what I had to learn. Your prayer language, listen, is a language. The actual word in the Greek is glossa. It get, it's from where we get the word glossary. All the word. So ready for this? When you were born. Did you become three years old and your dad or mom put their hand on you and then you were just like, oh, great to see you, mom. It's been a great day. I've been looking at you for three years and never until you put your hands on me right then and I fell back. Did I ever, was I able to communicate with you? It's so good to talk to you. You're such a great mom. I actually love this food. I don't like this food. I don't like that. I don't want this. I don't want that. Is that? No. You learned a language slowly because someone taught you. You learned how to speak by speaking. You learned what to speak because somebody helped you know what to speak. How did you learn how to say mama, ma, ma, ma? Because you, because somebody just said ma, 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 ma. And then all of a sudden you're riding home one day, ma, 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 ma. Ma, you don't even know you're saying mama, but everybody's like, they're saying mama. No, they're just repeating what they hear you say. But does that mean they're not communicating? Now they have a word added to their language. Anytime you speak, it doesn't just happen. You don't just walk up to somebody and it's just like, Bleh! and all these words come out of your mouth. No, you have to make a conscious choice to speak. This is our prayer language. Why am I saying all this? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you online right now. I'm going to pray for all of us. When you want to come down in a minute, we're going to have a prayer to invite the baptism of the Holy Spirit in our life. And then I'm going to cut my mic off and I'm going to let them sing for a minute. And I'm going to get down here and pray with you with some other staff members and volunteers. And I want to help you find your prayer language today. Some of you, you may pray and it may just come, come to you as a thought. That's how, that's how the Holy Spirit speaks, as a thought. Because you, you're, you're ruled by your mind. So you may be down here, and all of a sudden, you don't hear nothing, but all you hear is ba, 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 ba. You know what the enemy's going to do? You're making that up. That's ridiculous. You're a sheep. Like, you're going to bat. You. I heard one person pray. They said, la, 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 bumba, like the song or whatever. Like I, I, but you know what? That's what came to them. That's what it was. They didn't fight it. They believe it, and they speak it, and their language grows the more and more that they do it. So you may come down here and hear something immediately and you can start speaking. You may need me to help you or one of the people praying for you to help give you something the Holy Spirit gives to them. And you repeat it. And you go home and you start repeating it. Every day you repeat it in prayer. Every day you repeat it. And do you know what will happen? The more you repeat it, the more you do it, the more you'll hear. And the more you hear, the more you pray. And the more you pray, the more your life will expand. Because do you know what's going to be happening now? Now you're going to be praying in English all the things you see. But you're going to have some time where you're praying in this new language and it's going to be opening doors and the things that you can't see and you're going to see your life move at a speed you've never even imagined. Not only is he your guide saying go this way, but he's your power saying let me take you at a whole nother level because you're praying in a way that gives me permission to open things up like you didn't even know needed it. It's time to leave behind a good life and go after our best life. Are you ready? I'm going to pray. When I pray, I want y'all to just sing. I want y'all to make it big in here. Make it loud so they feel comfortable. Do whatever they want. You take us where y'all need to take us. You know what you're doing. I want y'all, I'm going to say amen. When I say amen, I want somebody bold to lead the way. I just want you to come up here. Just come up to the altar. We're going to pray and receive the Holy Spirit. Then we're going to get our prayer language. Same to you right there online. Make an altar there. If you're at your bed, when I say amen, get off, off the, your bed. Get by the side of it. Get down on your knees and say, this is my altar. And pray with us for the Holy Spirit. And then I'll be speaking to you about the, 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 uh, the language as well online. Are you all ready for this? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I know I've delivered the words you've given to me today. God, I felt your presence in this building since we kicked off the first stop. Something seemed different in this place today. The hunger of your people has been on another level if I've given your word today, God. I feel that they want this at a whole different level, God. I know people watching online, God, are feeling your presence right where they are. And in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, God, that strongholds are going to be broken. I thank you that people are going to be set free. I thank you that today people's lives are going to take huge steps forward towards their destinies, God, that they're never going to be the same. I thank you that you remove fear, God. I thank you that you remove doubt. I thank you that you remove hesitation. And I thank you, God, right now that they come running. They come running. They come running. They come running to your presence, running to you, Holy Spirit. Bow down at your and you completely rearrange their life today. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Shift us, Holy Spirit. Do something new in us, something fresh in us. Take us to another level. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody said amen. Amen. If that's you, if you say, I want it, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want my language, get up here right now. Come on, just start moving right now. Make an altar at your house right now. Come on. Come on, fill this place up. Yeah, come on. If you came down right now and if you're watching online, here's what we're going to do. We're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit first. I don't know if you feel something. That, that's not about God. That's about you. Some people feel warm, fuzzy feelings. Some people just, it's just a prayer. It's just normal. I don't know what you're going to feel, but just like you prayed when you got saved, Lord, I believe I want you to save me. It's by faith you're going to pray. Holy Spirit, baptize me. You got all of me. So just say it, say it after me, just like we pray for salvation. Say this. Say, Holy Spirit, I receive your baptism right now. Come on, online, pray this with me. Say, you can have all of me. I empower you. Take over. Blow my mind every bit of potential and calling on the inside of me wake it up put it to work and may I see it bring heaven to earth in this world before I die I'm all the way yours amen amen listen I don't know what you feel I don't Whatever is going, what I'm telling you now is you prayed, you believed, you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. You've just released God to do something so big in you, it's going to blow your mind. But now I want to help you find your prayer language. In this building, I've got some people down here praying. I'm going to come down myself in a minute. But here's what I want right now in your house, wherever you're at. As, I, as they start singing and they start worshiping, I'm going to start out just by praying out loud in my prayer language. Anything in that moment that comes to your mind, I want you to speak it out loud. It don't matter how crazy you think it sounds. You know who's crazy? The devil. The Bible says this. He's a liar and he's the father of all lies. Do you know how you know when the devil's lying? If he's talking. So if he's telling you it's crazy, it's the opposite of crazy. It's real and he don't want you to get your prayer language because what he wants you to do is live a life that you're only praying for one part of the mystery of your calling and you're not praying for every part of it. He, he can't do nothing with you when everything starts working together. So when I start praying, if you start hearing something, you just start praying it out loud. No matter how foolish you think you sound, you just start praying it out loud. Just start praying it out loud. Just start praying it out loud. 
And then after a minute, I'm going to come down. And if you don't have nothing, we'll give you something to start praying. And you can go home and you can start praying that and practicing that over and over and over. And the more you do it, the more God's going to give you more language. And the more language you pray, the more, the more mysteries are going to open up in your life. So God, I pray for freedom over every single person under the sound of my voice. I rebuke the intimidating voice of the enemy. And I thank you, God, that lives are going to be changed forever today. And we're going to take a step into our best life. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all can sing. Come on, whatever the Lord's putting right here, just start speaking it. Ba 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 ba. Whatever it is. Be bold, just speak it. Be bold, just speak it. Come on, online, right there. Be bold, right there. Speak it. If you're shopping and God's moving, put your buggy down. Go get in your car. Shut the doors and just do this. Then you can go back and get your groceries. Come on.
sits your breath in my lungs. So we pour out a praise to you all. It's your breath in my lungs. So we pour out a praise. Pour Great. 